this week on Cruising New England. What could the Godfather, LBJ, and Coca-Cola possibly have in common? Stay tuned and you'll find out. Minette, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Cruising New England. Today I'm going to visit with a good friend of mine. We're going to have a look at some of his classic cars, including a presidential limousine. We're going to visit his man cave and see a whole bunch of collectibles. All this and more on Cruising New England. All my life, I've been cruising New England meeting great people, visiting amazing places, and discovering wonderful classic and custom car collections, nostalgic automobilia, and so much more. Come on and join our adventure. I'm Paul Minette, let's go cruising. Closed captioning for Cruising New England on Nesson is being brought to you by New England Recycling, waste put to work. Cash for Gold, the place to sell your unwanted gold and diamonds. Where you sell your jewelry is as important as where you buy it. We at Cash for Gold are gold and diamond specialists. We will buy all size diamonds, gold chains, rings, bracelets, silver coins, and even broken jewelry. Often we pay two to three times higher than pawn shop prices. We also pay up to 90% of the daily price of both diamonds and gold. We are the original, authentic, family-run Cash for Gold and have been for over 35 years. Visit us at 527 South Broadway, Route 28 in Salem, New Hampshire. Your special moments are something to remember. For weddings, portraits, and special events, contact Sparks Fly Photography. Hi, I'm Jerry from Auto Rust Technicians. We've been welding and sandblasting and undercoating cars for over 35 years. If you've got those problems, give us a call. Hi, I'm Jim Grundy. Many of you know me as the old original of Collector Car Insurance at Grundy. Well, today I'm here to introduce something new. We call it the Motor Vehicle Programmer MVP. MVP is designed to offer you the same great coverage with agreed value and incredible rates, not just on your collector cars, but on your daily drivers, your motorcycles, your motorhomes, your pickup trucks. If it goes over the road, we can insure it on MVP. To get a quote, call our 800 number or visit us online. I'm Dick Shappy and deal in the finest classic motor cars, cycles, and vintage parts to collectors all over the world, but we're right here in New England. Vintage cars are like vintage wine. Both get better with proper care and time. I offer a luxury experience that's by appointment only. So check out my website, classiccars.ws, or call me at 401-521-5333 to find your personal piece of history. Now we're here with a good friend of mine, John Lawler, and today we're going to have a look at his car collection, some great memorabilia, but we're also going to see his personal man cave. But today, the star of the show is this beautiful Fleetwood Cadillac. 1955 Cadillac Fleetwood that was used in the original Godfather movie, and one of my personal favorite movies of all time. What did you do to it from the time you bought it? Well, it had no interior in it. It had been stored after the movie inside, but there were critters, and it had to be like in some place they had chickens or something like that because there was no fabric left on the seats, there was no fabric left on the door panels, the chrome was, was pitted, we did everything. We, we started from brand new, we used all original material in it. I, I would be hot pressed to tell this from a, from a brand, brand new original interior. How exciting is it to own a beautiful vehicle like this that was used in probably one of the most recognized motion pictures in the history of the business? Well, I, I love cars to begin with. As I said, I, I, I look at them as works of art and sculpture, particularly from, from this era, but the, the frosting on the cake is the fact that it came from the Godfather movie. So I was, I was thrilled just to have it. I'm very lucky. Well, tell us about the paint on it. Is this an original paint? Or this is actually original paint to the best of my knowledge. When I bought it, the, there was a shop down the, down the road from the museum where I bought it, and I asked them to wet sand it and buff it. We've done that more since we got it back here. We've spent a lot more time on it. But as far as I know, we didn't do any paint work. They didn't do any paint work on it. So it's, it's that original hard lacquer. Usually it dries out and cracks over so many years, but wet sanding and buffing and polishing and what you see is what you get. 
Well, I got to tell you, the interior that you did looks beautiful. It is. With, it with, is. You know, with the with the black. Yeah. So I, I, was this a, an original interior? Did you try to copy an interior from? We the did. It, it was an exact exact duplicate. The material and everything else. It took us a long time to find it, and a lot of people when they get in there, they they can't believe the ceiling height in it. And I said, think back to the you know the TV shows where they were smoking cigars and, and had the big fedora on. That's why it's got such a tall ceiling in it, it's for fedoras. Hey John, I want to have bragging rights here. I want to say that I actually drove in the car that was filmed on The Godfather. What do you say we take it out? I think we should go. Let's go, man. You collect Cadillacs. You love Cadillacs. Oh, I love Cadillacs. Why Cadillac? Eh, you know, Cadillac was the standard of the world. And at least that's what they call themselves for many, many years. And for a long time it probably was. But the other thing is my grandfather worked for uh, Boston Cadillac Olds, Peter Fuller's Cadillac Oldsmobile. And then when he went to a sales job, he got hurt on the job and then he went to a sales job someplace else. And he would come home with a different car every night. And I just, I just couldn't wait till he came home to see what he was driving for that night. He'd come in, I would say probably the first car I remember was a 54 Fleetwood, almost exactly like this. It was baby blue with a white top, and I just remember how quiet that thing was. And of course, in those days, I was standing up on the seat riding beside him. You'd be hard pressed to do that today. And he had one of these. He had a black, black 55 and a 57, and they just, they just kept getting better and better. So I remember my poor mother. She was, she was upset because my, one of my first cars was a 67 Cadillac convertible. And the reason she was upset, she said, "You're 17 years old. It was, it was an inexpensive car." But she said, you're 17 years old, what are you going to have to look forward to in life if you buy a Cadillac <laughs> now, you know? <laughs> She's got a good point there. She had a good point. <laughs> Start off with the Cadillac, where do you go from there? Now, did you go after it because it was used in the movie The Godfather? Absolutely. Oh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm mostly Italian. That's like roots. Are you kidding? <laughs> You know, I don't know, I'm sure most people that, that, that watch our show know that it was one of the greatest movies ever produced. Oh, yeah. Uh, and the budget for it at the time was they spent more money on that movie than any other motion picture yep. up to 1972. Yep. And this was in the movie. This yep. was great. Yep. You know, it's, it's quite a thing. And it was a pleasure driving it with you here today. I'm glad you came along for the ride. When we come back, we're going to have a look at a presidential limousine and a whole lot more all here on Cruising New England. Order a bunch of parts to get ready for the car show this weekend. And I got a hot deal, too. You think? Think again. Oh, man. Tired of back orders? You need NPD. With four strategically located superstores, orders are shipped direct to your door within one to three business days. National Parts Depot has quality restoration parts for Ford truck, Mustang, Camaro, Chevelle, and Firebird. For your free catalog, visit NPD online or call toll free. Find out what's happening. Get up-to-date information as I travel throughout New England and beyond. To get exclusive information and behind-the-scenes photos, join me on Facebook. I'm Paul Minette of Cruising New England at McMulkin Chevrolet. McMulkin has shipments arriving weekly of the new C7 Corvette. People from all over the country buy their Corvettes from McMulkin Chevrolet to get the highest level of value and service. McMulkin Chevrolet always has over 250 Corvettes in stock in their three-story climate control building. Remember, all roads lead to McMulkin Chevrolet. Check them out at McMulkin.net. The Thompson Auto Group. When September comes, the party begins. Cruise on over to the Big E in West Springfield, Massachusetts, September the 12th through the 28th. Would you like to see more Cruise in New England television? Now you can watch Cruise in New England every day on our website television show. See past episodes featuring premier automobile collections, memorabilia, automobilia, and car shows. You'll see our visit with Charles Gould and his Matchbox Motors Micro Car Museum, the Chevy Guy, John Broden's car collection and automobilia, and a whole lot more. Join us on our website television show at cruisingnewengland.com. Don't miss the Amherst Outdoor Antique Auto Show and Flea Market, Amherst, New Hampshire, the last Sunday of the month, April through October. Over 500 spots. Gates open at 6 a.m. with free admission. Before we have a look at your man cave, you have a very special limousine to show us. I do. I do. This car was one of 15 cars that was shipped to the White House. This one was used by Lyndon 
Baines Johnson. Most of the ones that went, the man from UNCLE had one, Elvis had one, uh, the cabinet members all had five inch black and white TVs. But this is a, a pretty much a perfect car. The only thing we found is, the only thing I did to this car is we painted the hood in the trunk. And when uh, the, the, the body shop got a hold of it, he said to me, I've never seen so much paint on a car in my life. Come to find out, in the old days, you could never do this today, the Secret Service used to open the doors to push the crowds back. Remember the hat pins and handbags and belt buckles? Every five, six times this car went out, they repainted the car. I talked to the, one, of the, one of the line guys that built, actually built this car, and he said, everybody thinks we, we, we custom built them. All we ever did to this car, we welded in the center section, painted the sec center section, leaded the roof, stretched the vinyl top of it, and reinforced it underneath. End of story. This is where uh, LBJ and probably Marilyn Monroe Road. Man, this is a great interior. I see the telephone here. Can you explain what you have going here? Yeah, this is a real, real rarity. I, I sent it down to Connecticut to have some work done on it, and I asked him, can you tell me if that was ever moved or it was if the console was ever opened up? He said, no, absolutely not. It's original. If you look closely at the dial, you can see White House Motor Pool. And if you look at it, these are the extensions, because these were nothing more at the time than, than two-way radios. You had, to, you had to push the handset to, to talk. And then the next step was to individualize this compared to the other vehicles that were used in government service was LBJ, his bar. Man liked to imbibe. <laughs> liked his bourbon and branch water. That's aftershave. <laughs> Everything was gutted from these cars when they came out of government service. They took everything. They took antennas, they left holes in the body, nothing. But they left this, which, is, which makes it very, very rare, you know? Well, I'd like to meet the guy that had it in between because they took beautiful care of the car. The car's flawless. So this is one of your favorite vehicles. Or I love this favorite? car. A very soft spot in my heart. It's, it's not a traditional Cadillac. Usually traditional Cadillacs have their, in those days, had their own, their own zip code. This is the first of the baby, really baby Cadillacs. 1979, they actually came out with, I think, uh, late 75, early 76. 1979, it had all the goodies. This is the one I wanted. It had four-wheel disc brakes. It was, you know, fuel injected. And I remember when I was a kid, and I was doing some work for Norwood Cadillac, and I would drive this car, and I would say, someday that's the car I'm going to have. This thing was $20,000 in 1979. That's a lot of money today. It is a lot of money today. I mean, you could buy a, you know, a heck of a car uh, today for $20,000. So yeah. back then, that was a ton. Yeah. The interior, I really bought it for the interior because I had looked at these for years and years and years. As soon as I saw the interior, I said, that's the car for me. So tell us about the interior. It's, in those days, it was a, it was a laminate. It wasn't a real leather. This is a leather. You could get the cloth, you could get the, get the leather. I've never seen one with a red interior. But this is an original interior. This oh, is wow. an original right. interior, never been touched. The only thing I did do is I painted the outside because I didn't realize it, but in those days, they did body work on the cars from the factory. So back in the corners of the, of the, uh, the trunk lid and a little bit on the front, there had been some body work done on it, but when the guy stripped it down, he told me that's from the factory. So John, what do we have under the hood in this? Let me show you. Paul, we've got a fuel-injected 350 Oldsmobile engine. I think it was one of the first times that a Cadillac had a brand, uh, an engine that was built by another brand. The fuel economy is good on it, but it's, it's everything that I've always wanted in a car. You can park it, not like some of the older ones, any, old, any of the old cars, because they were like trying to dock the Queen Mary. You know, John, you couldn't ask for a better color combination. Black with the red is really beautiful. Oh, it is. That's, that's what sold me on the car with the, the red pinstripe on the side. And it's not what the original paint, the original paint was lacquer. Another, another paint that they used at the time was enamel. Everybody used to say that Henry Ford said you could have a Model T in any color you want as long as it was black. That's because that was the fastest drying color. That was the only reason. But now this is, uh, it's got a clear coat on it. It's, it's, you can't hardly get lacquer anymore. You can't hardly get an enamel anymore because of the fumes. So John, uh, you showed me all your vehicles. I'm a memorabilia guy. I love Coca-Cola. I'm ready to go look at some of that stuff you got. Then we should go. When we come back, it's the John's Man Cave, all here on Cruising New England.
Welcome to the Tile Fair Tire Recognition Award Series. Each week we're going to be giving away an award to recognize a classic car owner throughout New England. I'm here with Jim Uliano. He's the Vice President of Marketing and Advertising for Town Fair Tire. Paul, Town Fair Tire is a proud sponsor of the Recognition Award Series. At the end of the series, we're going to have a Town for Tire Choice Award winner for the $5 gift certificate. It's going to be very exciting. Jim, I'd like to introduce you to Stan Page and his 1969 Camaro. Stan, tell us a little, little bit about your car. It's a fuel-injected 327. It's got over 300,000 total miles on it. My wife and I have covered the whole East Coast and put over 150 ourselves on it. Wow, it's really awesome looking. On behalf of Town for Tire, I'd like to present you with a gift certificate and your award. Thank you. Get to Town Fair Tire. You always get free mounting, free flat repair, free tire rotation, free snow tire changeover. Drive with confidence. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. So this is the man cave, John. So what do we have here? Ah, uh -huh, my friend, we have a working soda fountain from approximately the 1930s, as far as the marble part of it is concerned. This part here, the stainless part, which I had restored at uh, American Soda Fountain in Chicago, I believe they're the last ones in the country. This is from the late 40s, early 50s, but everything works. We've got the um, mixer that made Ray Kroc famous. Uh, that's, that's how he met the McDonald brothers. And that was the type of mixer that he, that he sold. And then back here, we've got a dispenser, a Coca-Cola dispenser from approximately the 1930s. Uh, root beer barrel, uh, probably 1940s or so. But everything in here works, uh, uh, including these two dispensers. I had these two dispensers over here restored. They look like outboard motors. Uh, one was a Dole, I don't know what the name of the other one was, but uh, again, from the 40s and 50s. And it's all stuff that I remember from when I was a kid. So John, tell me about some of your favorite pieces in here. Well, this is one, as I, as I pointed out earlier, this is a dispenser from approximately 1930, an octagonal dispenser. I've never seen another one like it. And the other one that's over here in the corner was probably from the 50s or early 60s. My daughters gave it to me and it was a total train wreck. You know, John, I collect Coca-Cola, but I've never seen a Coca-Cola canoe. I hadn't either until I got a phone call from a friend of mine that said, I have something you might be interested in. And it was, he, he told me that it was used in a commercial in the mid 60s for Coca-Cola. And he believes that they made about a half a dozen of them. But I more recently had a friend that explained to me that it was possibly on the cover of Time Life magazine. I, news to me, I had never heard that. So John, I also noticed something that I've never seen before is a Coca-Cola RC airplane. I had a buddy of mine years ago that made that for me and gave it to me for a Christmas present because of all the Coca-Cola memorabilia that we have here. John, there used to be hundreds of Howard Johnsons throughout New England and the country, and I noticed you have one of their signs on the wall. They had a monopoly, if you think about it, when we were kids, they had a monopoly on all the highways. They had zero competition. And those were on the front of every Howard Johnson's that was that they had. And then they had the weather vanes up on the roof. Remember those? Yes. Yeah. This, yeah. And those just went for big, big dollars. You also have a, an old phone. Is that is that a real antique telephone? That's a real one. It's not hooked up, but it's a real phone. 
Now you have quite a candy shop here. You literally have your own candy place. I do and I can't eat any of it. <laughs> but I, 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 it's a lot of it is old time candy and I love to see it when people come in and they say, ah, I haven't had one of those since I was a kid. Well, go right ahead and enjoy yourself because that, that's why it's there. You know, it's funny, uh, uh, you know, back in the day, you know, in the 50s, uh, you'd see a lot of penny candy places in drugstores. Yep. And I noticed up there on the wall, you have an RX piece up there. Mortar and pestle from Rexall, Liggett Rexall Pharmacies at the time. And when I, I worked in one, that's the only time I ever saw one prior to, the, to, to when I bought that one. The, the, the dead rubber chicken didn't come with it. <laughs> That bar that you have there is unbelievable. Now, did that come out of a penny candy store? I believe that they, they did it. I mean, those are from the, they're from the 1800s, so they could have been from pretty much anywhere, a, a general goods store or a penny, penny candy store. So I noticed another sign that's above the doorway there, and uh, it's got an ice cream cone there with five cents on it. About eight out of, peop out of 10 people can't guess who that is. Do you know who it is? I do, because you told me. Well. <laughs> Ted Kennedy when he was a little boy. I remember you couldn't do it today, but I remember my grandfather sending me to the store, the corner store, to buy his cigarettes. And I'd put a quarter in the machine, and I got back two shiny brand new pennies on a card from the machine. And that was my money. <laughs> Now what's that uh, bronze thing they have at the end of the bar? The spittoon? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, everybody huh? needs a spittoon. <laughs> John, out of all this Coca-Cola memorabilia that you have here today, I, you know, I picked this out because this is actually a stadium soda dispenser. I've never seen another one. I've never seen one with just Coca-Cola no. on it. It's no. really a nice piece and I can, it brings me back to the, to the day when I used to go visit Fenway Park when I was a kid. Yeah. This is a real beautiful piece. Coca-Cola. Peanuts on one side and Coca-Cola yeah. on the other side, all in one. This is a real Real nice piece. The horse. You have a horse here in the corner, and uh, it's in mint condition. It almost looks like brand new. Tell me about that piece. Does that again? That was a uh, from the personal collection of the owner of uh, Vintage Vending. Probably, I, I would say it's from the 60s, from yes. the 1960s. Yeah, I think it is. Late 50s, early 60s. I think I, I, it's, a, it's a beautiful example, but I, I think this is something that you would probably need to try. You want me to try? I, this? I you think you should. You try actually this. want me to get on this I, thing? I think you should. I, right, I think, first, I think your crew would have a laugh. <laughs> what do you think, folks? Should I give it a try? Let's, let's give have it, a look. Let's give does it, it a work? Shot. I guess it does work. <laughs> hey, guess what, folks? When we come back, I'm going to make a trade for something that John doesn't have for one of his Coca-Cola items. All this and more when we come back. Hi, my name is Neil Murley, Murley's Car Care Center. We are Southern New England's Sunoco Race Fuel dealer. Save on Sunoco Race Fuel at right off Route 3 in Weymouth Heights. And good luck on the track. These are the faces of childhood food allergies. To these kids, it's not about the inconvenience of restricting peanut products and other food allergens at school or at camp. To more than six million of our precious children, it can be a matter of life and death. Help us keep all of our children safe. Learn to recognize allergic reactions. Know the facts about food allergies. Visit the Wood Museum of Springfield History in Springfield, Mass., home of the world's largest Indian motorcycle collection, and Springfield built cars like Rolls Royce and the Duryea. Check out Cruise in New England Productions' website. You'll see updated information about our fun car show series, including the Magical Mystery Cruise, the Circle of Champions, the Super Wheel Showdown, and the Spooktacular Cruise and Classic. Also, subscribe to Cruise in New England Magazine. We feature some of the hottest rides in the Northeast, along with event listings and a whole lot more. Don't miss a single issue. And if you want more information about sponsorships, advertising, or personal appearances by Paul Manette, email us at cruisenewengland at AOL.com. In the market for new tires, there's only one place to go, Town Fair Tire. We beat anyone, any day. Online prices, we beat them. Wholesale clubs, other tire dealers, we beat them. No matter what the brand or the size, Town Fair Tire will beat any price, any day. And you always get all these services free. That's why nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. Name brands at discount prices, Town Fair Tire. 
We're back, and uh, John, before we went on break, we said we were gonna do some bartering today. A couple of weeks ago when I saw you, you told me you'd trade me this clock if I could come up with some items that you don't have. Yes, I did. And I know you don't have any Pepsi Cola. No, I don't. So I took this, <laughs> I took this out of my collection. You're an evil man. Oh it. man, I want you to get going. <laughs> so anyways, I brought these collectibles for you. And uh, including a radio, some soda stuff, and uh, hopefully it will equal the value of this beautiful clock. Good stuff. Thank you, Works for me, my works, friend. Work, works for me, too. This will end up in my garage. Excellent. I'll come visit it. How's that for a trade, folks? I got my Coca-Cola clock, and poor John's going to start talking <laughs> Pepsi-Cola. John, this is a pretty unique piece. Looks like it's from the 40s or the 50s. You're absolutely right. It's from the 1940s, they tell me. It never had all the decals put on it, and it was never used. If we are sitting, it's been eaten by critters. But other than that, there's very little wear and tear in the thing. So when, when I spotted it at a museum, I inquired about it, and they said, well, everybody wants that. So we'll give you a shot at it if nobody else wants it, if any of the people that come in here on a regular basis. So I got a call one day. I said, are you, are you interested? And I said, yeah, absolutely. The price was right, so here, here it is. But brand new, sat in the guy's basement since the 40s. Does this thing really work? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So what do you do? You put the ice in here? And dry ice. Dry ice. Yeah, dry ice. It's got a little tray on the inside. And then in the front, you could also put some extra dry ice in here because you know, you'd have to drop a block in there to keep it cold. Very little insulation in the thing. You know, if this TV thing doesn't work out for you, here's a whole nother revenue stream for you. Well, you know what? I gotta see if I can ride the thing. I think you can do Let's it. Let's go. Let's see. Hey, I see, I see. Oh, I <laughs> Hey, John, I love your Cadillacs. This is the one I'm taking home. You're gonna have to arm wrestle my wife. <laughs> She's a killer. I had this car when I met her, and this has always been her favorite until she saw the 55 Cadillac from the Godfather movie, and then she kicked this one to the curb. So you might have a shot. Well, I hope so. <laughs> so how long have you had the vehicle? I bought this in 1971. It's a 1966. I sold it for a couple of years, and then I bought it back, and it was in the condition was horrendous. So then I, you know, raised the family. So it took a few years to get back into it and get it done. But I'm, I'm pretty happy with it now. It's I, a beautiful car. Yeah, oh. I mean, absolutely, it's beautiful. I mean, you could take this to a show and be a winner. Yeah, I love, love it. I love everything about it. I love driving it. I had a number of Corvettes because I mean, you remember what it was like. You know, four four twos, GTOs, 1500 bucks all day long. Corvettes, you can buy any one you want for 2500 bucks. As soon as I found this one with all the toys and air conditioning, I said, that's the car. So let's talk about the Corvette. Sure. They built this body style from 1963 to 1967. They, it came in a coupe and a convertible. What I liked about this one immediately is that these cars are hot inside. I don't know if you've ever been in one of the older ones, but they're, they're hot. The car had factory air conditioning, and it's big enough that you could refrigerate your house if you needed to. Plus, it had all the other toys, you know, power windows and things like that. So, you know, the older you get, the lazier you get. You, you, want, you want to be good to yourself. So, I, you know, I, I, I like the toys. I think you were lucky that it had all the bells and whistles in the thing. Yeah. Yeah, I was. I was very, very lucky. The the wheels, the knockoff wheels that are on it are reproductions because the ones that I found were either prohibitively expensive or had some, you know, curb rash on them. So I said, you know, what's the difference? I'm going to beat them up anyway. If they're reproductions, I won't feel too awful bad about it, you know? And I love the white. The white looks beautiful. Oh, it pops. Yeah, it With just pops. black interior. Yep, it just pops. It's, it's just beautiful. And now, the older I get, the more I appreciate a telescopic steering wheel, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I read you, I read you. You know? Now, with the side pipes, were they an add-on, or, or, or did this come with the This, this came with side pipes, right. but I got to tell you, with, you know, on a long trip, they'll turn your brain to mush. You know, so you, you leave it in top gear when you go someplace and pretty much leave it there, you know? I think at some point I'm gonna put a five speed in it, which is sacrilege to other Corvette owners, but you know what, you gotta live with it too. Right, right. Well, it's a beautiful car. It's one of my favorite cars. I love this vehicle, a 66 Corvette. Maybe someday I'll be able to get it from Well, I'm gonna tell my wife if I get hit by a bus or go missing, call you. Okay, <laughs> sounds good to me, but let's hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> Thanks, I'd rather buddy. have you as my friend. All right. <laughs> I want to thank my good friend John Lawler for a great day here today, John. Paul, a pleasure. Anytime you, you want to come by. And I'll be back again soon. Okay, bud. I'm Paul Manette. Until next time, I'll be cruising New England.